survival kit. This is a rather large personal survival kit. Um, but the reason is it covers all of the items that it needs to cover very well, in my opinion, for a personal survival kit. So what's it need to do? It needs to provide shelter if it can, food, water, and a little medical. Fire, of course, um, but food, water, shelter, and fire are the primary things that we're looking for a PSK to do for us. And this one does it in multiple levels. So obviously we start off, we have a tin. So this isn't just a tin, this holds my kit together, but this is also a pot that I can boil water in. So there's one way that I can purify water with this thing, right out of the gate. Once we get inside of it, I have water bags. These are made by Whirlpack. You can get them on Amazon, they're gusseted on the bottom. Um, they will not stand up, but they're still gusseted on the bottom. It does provide for a little more capacity in them. Um, but this is a way to carry water. I'm not a fan of the condoms in survival kits to carry water. Um, as a lot of us know, they will break easily. And in Florida in particular, you're not going to take a condom full of water and run through the Palmetto Forest and get anywhere with it. So I'm just not a fan of those. These are a great substitute. Yeah, they take up a little more space, um, but they're way more rugged. The next item in here has several things in it. This is my bandana. Um, I keep one of these with me all the time because they're just so damn handy. But I store some things in it, like my signal mirror. Um, being able to signal for help if you need it is a good thing. Not to mention, it's going to let you look at yourself hygiene-wise. Um, also a good way to look for ticks, things like that, in places you can't necessarily see. Um, you can even tape this thing to a stick, tie it to a stick if you need to, to really look in places you can't get to. Sounds silly, but when you're in the woods and you're stuck, you're lost um, those issues will arise so having a signal mirror is a great thing but also learn how to use it learn how a signal mirror, mirror works um, experiment with it and do it before you actually need it next in here is a wire saw now this is a real wire saw these are a little more expensive i get this from best glide um, this one will work um, i keep it wrapped in the bandana to keep the noise signature low this thing rattling around in here obviously would make a lot of noise not only is it annoying, but I might not want people to hear me in the woods. The last thing I keep in here is some brass wire. Um, obvious purpose for this is snaring, but also repairing things if I needed to. Um, it could be used to manufacture stuff or, or rig something up if I needed. Lots of uses for snare wire, so why not have some in your kit? Here's my second layer for water, a Sawyer mini filter. Um, with this, I can drink out of any water source. Um, anywhere and the way I use the system is fill the water bags from whatever water source I can find generally I will I have two so my intent is to have a clean water bag and a dirty water bag the dirty water bag I would drink from the filter the clean water bag would be if I boiled water filled this bag then I could drink straight from the bag worst case you fill them both with dirty water you get on the move you use your filter to drink the water so that's the second layer for water my third layer I'll come here tabs. Um, drop them in, purifies the water, I can drink it again. So that's three layers just for water out of this box. We'll move on to fire next. In the kit, we have my fire stuff, which consists of a ferro rod, obviously a lighter, and then lastly, a Fresno lens. So that's again, three ways to start fire out of this kit. I carry some commercial tinder tabs because these will burn wet. They're light, they take up no space. Um, I love these things. So there's a fire kit that I know I can get a fire with. Even if I'm one-handed, I can still strike a big lighter, I can still get a fire going. Relying solely on a fire steel I love fire steels, but that's a two-handed fire method. Um, you need to have one that's only one-handed because you may be in that position. So having one that you can use with one hand is very important. But again, there's three layers of fire. For shelter in this kit, I have a very compact space blanket. It's also a very durable blanket. Um, this can be used to make a shelter. The myth that these will keep you from freezing to death is just that it's a myth. Um, this is a vapor barrier, a heat shield um, to be used in conjunction with other things. If you have a jacket or even if you have a thin sleeping bag that's not 
doing its job in the cold. You could wrap up in this, then get inside of a sleeping bag. That'll help you um, retain heat, obviously. Um, but these make great reflective shelters in that you could put it up in a lean-to fashion, build a fire out in front of it, and it's going to radiate heat back at you. So you'll have the heat from the fire in the front, warmth from the back when it's radiating off the blanket. Um, so these are great to have in a kit. Um, again, more uses than, than we could list. It's limited by your imagination. Um, obviously in my little kit I have quite a bit of boo-boo gear. Band-aids, knuckle bandages, um, some ibuprofen, some Tylenol. Um, there's some Imodium in here, which is pretty important. Um, if you're going to be out in the woods, lost, um, trying to survive, Imodium could be crucial to you. Some triple antibiotic ointment. I also have a diamond hone blade in here, or a sharpener. I live in Florida. We don't have rocks in Florida you can sharpen a knife on. In lots of parts of the country, you can do that. You can pick a rock up and sharpen a knife. You're not going to do that in Florida, so I carry one of these. You guys may not think you need one, but having a way to keep an edge on a blade to me is critical. And like I said, you can't do it out of nature down here where I live. Obviously a little cordage, um, very important. It's not much. It's about 20 feet of cordage, but it's enough to help me get a shelter built to tie stuff up if I need to, whatever, whatever the case may be. But cordage is obviously really important. And here I have a fishing kit combined with a sewing kit. So there's fish hooks in here, fishing line weights. I have a bag of lures. I keep two small bobbers in here to be used with the fishing kit. Um, this is a way I can provide food. This is a way I can provide food. So that's two different ways to provide food out of this kit. Not to mention the sewing kit. Um, let me repair my clothing, my gear, um, impromptu stitches if you needed to. You gotta be a tough bastard to do it, but it can be done. For tools in here, I keep a combination saw and razor blade. Um, it's just a blade to have in the kit because a blade is better than no blade. And the little saw, same thing. Something is better than nothing. If this is all I have, I still have a way to cut stuff. I still have a way to saw through something if I need to. Uh, in particular, this is handy for making snares. That's The little saw is great for doing that kind of stuff. I also have a pair of tweezers in here. Um, they don't take up any room and we've all had a splinter before. So these are great to carry as well. The last thing in here is a Streamlight Nano. Um, I love this little light. It's bright, it's small, and it's just a way to have light with me in my kit in a worst case scenario. Um, you could be inside of a building or something when, when things go down and need a light source. Um, this is a light source. I also keep a set of spare batteries in the kit for it just in case again they're lightweight they don't take up much space but this is a pretty complete kit that covers all the phases um, of survival that we would need to deal with now is it going to do all of those things 100% and 100% and comfortable absolutely not but all of this will increase your comfort level increase your survivability um, everybody needs a PSA, PSK kit and so everybody needs to get started on one this is just one idea. This is my version of one. I also have a smaller pocket kit. This is a very large kit, obviously. It's a huge tin. Um, it resides on a chest rig that if I ever had to grab a rifle and run for my life, those things are going with me, I'd have this on my person. But the important thing is that your personal survival kit is on your person. You keep it with you. My little one's in my truck right now. Um, I have this one here. My pack is in my truck. Again, we we're talking layers. These are just layers of my survival system. Plus, I have stuff on here. I can do fire, I can do cordage, I can do a number of things out of this bracelet right here. This could be considered a small PSK. There's even a blade in this thing. Um, Super E straps, check them out. But get started on your personal survival kit today. Cover the basics. Shelter, water, fire, food, little medical. I add that in there because you're gonna need it. You're gonna be uncomfortable, you're gonna be sore, you could possibly be getting sick. Throw a little stuff in there, don't take up much room.